All right, guys, today we are taking a look at the new Came H4 portable camera stabilizer. Now, these stabilizers are still great. I know there's a lot of brushless gimbals out there on the market, and uh, they do serve a purpose. They do work really well. Um, but it, I, I wouldn't say it would replace something like this, especially because the prices are typically higher on the gimbal. And uh, the other day when we were out shooting, uh, you know, we ran out of battery power, which is a huge problem unless you're carrying multiple, multiple batteries. Um, so these, something like this, are way more portable, easy to set up, no batteries required, runs all day, um, and you're still gonna get very, very smooth shots. It does take a little bit of practice, but you get amazing smooth shots. Um, people have been using things like this for decades. So um, this is the new Came H4. Uh, as you can see, it's similar to a lot of the other portable stabilizers that are out on the market. Uh, this one comes with an angled handle right here uh, for ergonomics. There's a little bit of a knurled texture right here underneath this um, gimbal. And that's there because this is where your steering comes in play with your left hand or your right hand, whichever. Uh, your steering hand is able to grip the knurled area here uh, so you could steer a lot easier. The gimbal here is adjustable up and down and we'll get into that in a second and show you guys why that something like that is very important. The uh, bottom telescopes so it gets up to this height, so it can support something like a uh, Canon DSLR right here. Uh, the legs do fold up. There's a locking pin underneath here, and it folds up just like that. These are the amount of weights that it does ship with, which is pretty much all you're going to need. Um, so very easy to pack up, very easy to set up, and we're gonna go through some balancing steps right now on this. So uh, to do that, you just loosen up the quick release plate here. Now this plate is a drop-in plate. It, it only goes in on one side first, then drops down, and then you lock it here. Um, so that's how you would get it in. But if you notice, there are some pins at the bottom here. And that's so that if your plate comes loose for some reason, um, on the quick release, if it slides, it'll prevent it from just kind of sliding off. So anyways, uh, we need to get this plate set up on this camera. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of steps on how to balance your camera onto a stabilizer. Now this goes for any stabilizer on the market. Um, so this is gonna help you get whatever camera stabilizer you're gonna, you're gonna buy uh, set up, but you'll notice that there are features in these stabilizers that maybe some of the other ones don't have, and it's a reason why it's gonna be easier to get something like this set up. So again, we're gonna go through the steps and then you'll kind of pick out some of those features. And so when you're shopping, you'll figure out, okay, this is this lacks this, and that's why it's cheaper, because it doesn't have, say, some of the fine-tuning knobs or the adjustable gimbal, uh, et cetera. So we'll, we'll go through that. Anyways, the, the most important thing that you want to get set up first is to find the center balance of your camera so that you can get the plate on there as close as possible. Now, even if you don't get it perfectly dead center, the stage on this stabilizer moves forward and back left and right, so it'll let you fine tune that balance, but you do want to get it fairly close on the plate itself. Now, from my experience, I, using this combination here with my Sigma 20 millimeter and a full frame 5D Mark II or Mark III, I kind of know that my center point is right here between the lens and the camera body. On this particular setup, yours may be a little bit different. On the, on the, the center point um, through the back here, I'm a little bit to the right of this uh, LCD here. So there's a little dot here that I kind of recognize as my center point. Now, one way you can find out the center balance point of your camera is to get either a rail. Um, sometimes I'll use a block of wood like this because uh, the camera doesn't roll as easily. And what I'll do is I'll throw the camera on here and just kind of find where that center balance is. Uh, and then that's kind of where I would place the center of my plate. And then uh, same this way, if you kind of move your camera forward and back a little bit, you can see right now it's falling forward. If I pull it back a little bit, I'll probably get better balance. So ideally, I figure out where my center point is for my camera, and then that's kind of my starting point. So I'm gonna look for the middle of my plate, um, and then I'm going to try to get that that middle part lined up to where uh, my, my center point is on the back. And then on this side, there's a zero marker right in the middle here 
and then it goes out to negative four or plus four. So I want this zero to be where my center balance point is on the side of this camera. So I'm gonna line that up here and then I'm also going to line up the, the middle here and then choose a spot underneath, the, underneath this cheese plate that best fits my camera setup. Now that is something important. When you're shopping for stabilizers, make sure that they, they offer some sort of long plate cheese plate that gives you multiple mounting options that'll let you place your camera either forward, back, or side to side so you can get the best balance. Some of the stabilizers out there don't offer all of these setups and that's gonna be harder for you to balance later on. Aside from fine tuning on the stage itself, forward and back, left and right. We'll get into that. So look out for that when you're shopping for stabilizers. So from my experience, I will place it right here. So another great thing is, even though I've adjusted the plate below the camera here, um, I still have battery access to say a 5D Mark II or Mark III. So if you guys have this camera, the stabilizer is gonna work great for that. So you can just quickly remove your camera, swap the battery, put it back on. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so as I mentioned before, it drops in on one side, drops down on the next side and then you're going to lock it down. Now before we lock it down, there is markings on the side here. So what we wanna do is we wanna try and start with our balance point because I have this plate uh, dialed into zero, fairly close to zero, I'm gonna try to line up my zero to the arrows. And maybe you could see that right there on this side. There's a little arrow right in here. All right, so we're fairly close at this point. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this as far as possible. Now it's possible to balance a stabilizer like this where it's not fully extended so that it's shorter. And even though that's possible, if you balance it with the bottom pole fully extended, um, that's gonna make your life easier when you're out in the field because you don't have to judge where in the middle of this bottom post you need to line up uh, this extension. When you go out in the field and you de deploy your stabilizer, you just telescope the bottom leg and then you're done. You should be at your, your balance point. So uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll figure out where this camera sits, um, either it's fo falling forward or back or side to side. So if I just pick this up, it's slightly leaning back. This is actually pretty good where it's at right now. So I'm gonna just push it forward a little bit using the uh, fine tuning knobs on the back here. So you'll see that. Just gonna dial it in forward until I think it's uh, fairly horizontal. And that's close, that's not too bad. There's actually a bubble level back here. So uh, for this stabilizer, another good option is to have a bubble level uh, on the stabilizer so you can get your horizon straight as you're dialing it in. And I'm not actually getting too much um, side to side lean on the stabilizer. Now this may look balanced, but if I'm throwing the stabilizer around, you'll notice that the bottom is gonna be heavier. So as I walk around, it'll start to sway. And you, you may often see guys do this test, the drop test. You see how rapidly this bottom drops down. And uh, if you have your bottom weight too heavy, then your camera's gonna get thrown all over the place. So again, in order to change that, you would reduce the weight on the bottom or you would telescope this leg upward, which makes it less bottom heavy. But deploying this all the way down um, is gonna be easier for you guys. Having all the weights on here is gonna add more mass. It's gonna make it more stable. So what do we do? We adjust the gimbal on the side here. This is the middle balance point, just kind of like a seesaw. If we bring this down lower, you'll notice that we will reduce that drop time. And then if we bring it down too low, what ends up happening is the middle balance point is gonna to be top heavy. So now the camera's gonna drop on that end right there. So that's another feature to look out for when you're shopping for stabilizers. This middle uh, balance point, an adjustable gimbal right here. You won't get that on like a Glidecam HD 1000, 2000, 4000. 
um, and, and some of the other stabilizers, you won't have the adjustable gimbal. This is very, very handy. It, uh, you'll use it quite a bit when you're fine tuning. So aside from uh, trying to get this balanced this way, there's another way you wanna check your balance. Um, I've never really gone into detail about this, but it's, it's a little tip, hopefully it helps you guys. Um, I'm just gonna use this 15 millimeter rod here to kind of go through these steps. But you can use anything from like a light stand or a tripod. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the post here and I'm gonna first get my camera as balanced as possible down the middle so that it just kind of stays elevated. All right, so I'm just kind of getting this close to being balanced on both sides. You notice that it's still a little bit heavier on this side here, and that's totally fine. What we're trying to get to right now is adjusting the, the uh, balance of this camera, um, doing it horizontally, and, and I'll show you what happens. If I point the lens downward, we want the camera to stay down. If I turn the camera on its side, you notice that it wants to fall over on its back. And if I turn it this way, you notice again, it wants to fall over on its back, which tells me that the back part is actually heavier than the top part. So if the back part is heavier, we wanna push the back down. So we're gonna push this camera forward a little bit. Basically what we're doing is we're just gonna rotate this on its side until we can get it to the point where it kind of naturally stays um, in its position. So here, my lens is falling forward. So I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. So if my lens is falling forward, that means that this side of the camera is actually heavier than this side of the camera. So we wanna move it uh, this way. Here, if I leave it on, its, on the lens, I could see that my this side is actually dropping. So looking at it this way, this side is heavier than this side because it's dropping this way. So what I wanna do is move this camera this way. So I'm gonna just pull this back. All right, so you notice it's not falling either way here. I'm gonna rotate this upward this way. It's not falling either side. If I put the lens sideways, it's falling back just a little bit, so I'm gonna push this forward now. That looks good. And if I put it this way, so now we have it balanced on all four sides here. So what you'll do is you'll play with this and um, just try to balance your camera as best as possible. It, you, it literally takes just like a turn on every fine tuning knob um, to get this centered out as best as possible. Uh, so again, when you're shopping for a stabilizer, look for one that has a fine tuning knobs, look for one that has a quick release plate that has a cheese plate, look for one that has an adjustable gimbal and a telescoping leg here. So now that we have our camera fairly close to being balanced um, and keeping its uh, position stationary in this horizontal plane here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the, uh, the drop time. So it is very slow, so I'm gonna move this gimbal a little bit so that we can get it to drop down a little bit faster on this end right here. So what we're looking for is about a, a two second drop time from here to here. And that's pretty good to me. So we should be pretty close. We may have to dial in the uh, stage just a little bit at this level. But we should be very, very good at this point. Um, the stabilizer should maintain its position now so if we're running and we come to complete stop, it'll keep its position. Because the camera doesn't have to fight imbalance, um, you're gonna get smoother shots, you're gonna get less sway, uh, it'll be easier to control.
and easier to steer. All right, as you can see, I have the uh, H4 collapsed um, all the way down. And just to show you how fast it is to set up, I'm gonna do it right here out in the field. So first thing we do is we just extend these legs here. We turn this uh, leg lock at the bottom here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach my uh, camera. Now, if you remember, I had the plate set to zero. So all I have to do is find my marking again and lock down the QR plate back to uh, where, where I had it. Now my, my stage has already been adjusted forward, back, left and right. So I'm just putting my plate back exactly where it was and then I'm gonna deploy the leg all the way down. Um, again, deploying the leg all the way down when I'm balancing it means I don't have to figure out where in the middle my balance point is. I just drop it all the way down and I'm ready to go. So this technically should be balanced, which we could see it is. And then you still have all your uh, articulation here, but the camera's already balanced. So very quick to deploy out in the field uh, using those tips. So we'll take it out right now. So that's a quick look at the new Came H4 stabilizer. Tons of features in this one. Very, very high quality build. Um, definitely a stabilizer to look out for. Uh, I'll have links and more information on the blog, cheesycam.com.